Colin Dredge. How lovely here to be in your presence here at Froome. Well, it's, it's nice to see you come this far north of uh, Somerset. <laughs> but how could we not come up to see you? On a, on a, on a wet day on as well. Wet day in I mean, you're one of the living legends of the club, well, having been a, one of the members of the glory years. Too. I don't know about legend, I was just another cog in the machine. But I, I was very privileged to play with some, some good players, and I couldn't have played it a better time. It all, all fell in the slot, shall we say. So, yeah, because you, you, I mean, you've come from pretty sort of humble beginnings, haven't you? Really? Yes, I did. I um, basically paid, played for Froome um, in the old Somerset League then, and they, uh, I think then I was doing well, and um, uh, I think Roy Kerslake played for Taunton at the time, and Roy kept sending me letters to come down and, and play for the twos or the under 25s that it was and um, eventually I did and um, it's, I've never looked back since then really. And I think y you obviously came from a cricketing family didn't you? Yeah I did. You had yeah. a big family and I'm guessing you all play cricket at home? Yes we um, it was well it was carnage at home because obviously um, I'm one of ten so I've got two sisters and seven other brothers and all the all my brothers and myself have played for Froome. Um, so um, obviously when um, we had a bit of spare time, you got the bat and the ball out. And uh, lucky enough, we lived in a cul-de-sac. So um, we used to play in, in the road in the cul-de-sac, but I don't think the neighbours enjoyed it because we kept hitting the ball over their gardens and that. And um, I think we were very unpopular at the time. So, so. But obviously then, then you obviously made a name for yourself playing for Froome. Am I th right in thinking you and Viv locked horns fairly early on? Yeah, we. Um, that's right. It was, um, I think, at the quali qualifying time that Viv just came over from Antigua. And Hallam was playing as well, Hallam Mosley, um, for Lansdowne. And Froome played Lansdowne. And um, anyway, Viv came in, I think he came in number three. And I bowled a couple of balls and he hit one right back at my midriff. And if I hadn't a corner, I think it would have went through me. So it was either hang on it or, or wear it. So, um, and then obviously, you know, from then I, I sort of respected him as a player and, and seen the, uh, what he can do. He's a fantastic player. And it was a privilege and a pleasure to have him or call him one of my colleagues. Yeah, and you obviously went and then played second level cricket for the club in 75, I think. I? Yeah, I did. Um, you had that glory season, didn't you, yourself? That's you right. Very well, 100 wickets and 1,000 runs for Froome. That, that's correct. It, um, we had a good season Froome where we won everything. And um, Roy, Roy Kerslake kept on to me. And I, I, so I went, um, I think we played up in Cheshire. Up, uh, and we, uh, Cheshire in Shropshire, we went on the tour. and. Basically, um, I'd done well with the ball and the bat, and um, I, th I think a couple of weeks later, um, uh, uh, Ian was away at the test match, and we had a few bowling injuries, and it was about a festival, and um, I think it was because um, Nick Evans, I think, was at the time, it was, it, he, I think he was on the grain, uh, grain staff, Lord's grain staff. and it was basically out of me and him to be selected, and I think Derek Taylor was captain that day, and I got the nod and it, it just all fell in the slot really. I'd, I'd done well that and, and they then went on to uh, offer me a contract, which was great. Brian Rose was telling me about the first ball that, that you bowled when you got uh, Glenn Turner out. He was telling me that Glenn Turner wasn't quite sure what to expect. <laughs> I think my, my action uh, is uh, very questionable, shall we say, and it's uh, more of a catapult or whatever. It, it's not textbook. Um, they could see that I'm, I'm well out in the sticks here in, in, to, to come to Froome. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, I, I think I, I just turned up and I played and i just done what was natural to me. And, and um, he, he was just, just very unlucky. You know, to to get one that actually moved. <laughs> of course, nice that you were at Bath. So I'm guessing your family could come out and watch you. Yes, um, I made my debut at Bath, and um, obviously it's only uh, ten miles away from here. So where all the lads came up and stayed, because obviously they were located in Taunton, I would um, travel backwards and forwards, and uh, it gave me the opportunity for my family to, uh, or my brothers and sisters and, and relations to come and see me, which was fantastic. It was great. You, you were. 
you, you've got a reputation for always being happy to bowl whichever end it would be, usually up the hill and into the wind because nobody else wanted to. Is that right? <laughs> well, it's when you when you when you got Joe and Ian bowling, you know, opening bowlers, and 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 favourably um, you've got Vic then and, and myself. Then I was more used to um, to stop bow one end, and uh, while Ian and Joe fired at the other end. And then obviously Vic was a very fine bowler and, you know, we were very blessed to have such good talent in our side. And, then, and of course, you were there at a time when Closey was gathering together and developing that, mm -hmm. that group of youngsters who obviously went on to mm -hmm. do great things. I mean, what was it like playing with Closey? Oh, There's lots of stories about yeah, him. Yeah, indeed. What was he really like? He was quite a character. What, what I liked about him is that, you know, he, he'd sort of say, come on, we'll run through the brick wall and he'd be the first to lead us through the brick wall, but you would follow him, you know, and I had total belief in him and, you know, he wouldn't, you know, if, if he said he'd do it, he'd do it. And, you know, his, his ways were very straight and, and he was very straight to the point, which there was no gray areas or whatever, you know, and, and as a person, I, I mean, he, he was fantastic and uh, he, he was quite a, a, you know, a character which, um, I, th I think, you know, obviously he laid the foundation. He ha you had young players like Sl uh, Philip Slocum, um, Keith Jennings, myself, um, Vic Marks, Peter Roebuck. I mean, there's five or six that, you know, and there's not Nigel Popperwell and then David Gurr come. Um, so there was, you know, as well as uh, Trevor Gard, you know, so there was a, a big cluster of, uh, as well as Viv and Joe and, and also Ian at that yeah. time. So we all... I mean, I remember playing a number of games in youth cricket with all those players, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, lower lower levels, schoolboy level. So you knew each other pretty well? <laughs> yes, yes, we did. Um, you know, in, you know we, we all seem to get on well. And, you know, when you're living in each other's pocket, you know, you, all right, some, some people you get on better with. But, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we're here to sort of pull in one direction as long as we're all pulling in the same direction. We, we all often have our arguments, but we clear the air and that was it, you know, and, and we start again. So. And yeah. then, obviously, in 78, when... Uh, Rosie took over as captain. Mm -hmm. We got through to uh, two finals. Cup final, didn't we? Two yeah, finals, we did. Really. Yeah, so, yeah. And they played at Lords that day, didn't you? Against Sussex. That is correct. Yeah, so yeah. What we, sort of an experience was that for you? That was. I mean, it was unbelievable, really. You know, to only sort of be playing professional cricket. I think it was for two years then, and being in a, a Lords final straight away, and um, w w was great. You know, I, I think as as we look back. On that experience, I mean, that weekend we, we lost to Sussex on the um, Saturday in the Gillette final, and then we lost to uh, Glamorgan in the John Player League. Yeah. All we had to do was beat them, and we lost by one run, I think, in the end or whatever. But it gave, you know, we, we went there and didn't really know what to expect, just went with the flow, and, and we all sort of had early nights and that, and, and sort of, you know, it's better to have sort of eight hours good sleep in 12 hours tossing and turning you know and although you know it didn't I bowed quite well that day personally but as a performance collectively we didn't play as well as we we had played all year and so we, we learned from that should we say our bad experience but then uh, every then the the next year it was it turned around you know and, and therefore then we you know, we knew that we can do anything if we wanted to do it, you know, and it was it was a whole new experience, you know. Of course, we, we won on the Saturday, we beat North Hants. Yeah, and that's on, right. On the Sunday, the Sunday we went to Notts, didn't that's we? right, Nottingham at Trent Bridge, and, and we beat them. And we had the, I think, Kent lost or something, yeah. because if they'd have won, they would, they would have won the competition, but it all fell in the slot, and we sort of turned it round. And um, it, it was great, you know, it, it made all, you know, made up for that previous experience that year, you know, but um, brilliant, good memories. And uh, you went back and were involved with quite a few of the Benson's finals after that. Right? That's right, I played, um, the, the only final I didn't play in was uh, the, the actual um, Nat West final. Yeah. Um, I picked up a groin strain and I came back too early, cut a long story short. I played for about the first two months and then I came back about a week before the final and um, they kept the same side, which I had no problem with, you know, and um, they've done very well. Keith Jennings 
done a fantastic job. He won that game from Bonin against Lamy mm. for his 20 or 30 off his 12. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was great, you know, and I, I was lucky to play in against Kent and Surrey. Um, i trying to think who else. Uh, there was Kent, Surrey, Sussex, and there's one other, I can't think. Well, it's dement d dementia gets to me in my old age. <laughs> um, and yeah, Not not really. Nottingham, Nottingham, that's right. So um, yeah, it was lovely to to go there four times in in to win at least three. You know, it's, that's quite a record or whatever. But um, very very, you know, some nice experience and good memories. And how do you earn your living now? You're still working, well, aren't you? that's that's right. I I think I do retire um to at sixty six next year. Um, I, I've been working for, I went back into tool making when I finished and um, I found that tool making, that's my trade, is gone on quite a bit so I, I decided to look elsewhere and I've been working for Network Rail for 20 odd years and really enjoying it and uh, haven't looked back really but also at the same time following Somerset all the time on, on the uh, box and now you can uh, obviously get them on your phone in that, can't you? Even the, the matches at the ground, which is great. So it doesn't mean much work gets done at work. <laughs> <laughs> and if you had your time all over again, would you do it again? Yes, I've got no regrets. I've got no regrets. You know, um, I'm, I'm one of the very lucky f few that, you know, touch wood that if I died tomorrow, I would say I've had a good life, you know, and I uh, wouldn't change anything.